Outdoor Experience here for Steinway's Summit. Uh, and I'm coming to you live, maybe as the screen suggested, from Steinway Hall in New York City. We are on Sixth Avenue, uh, just, just around the corner from Times Square, Bryant Park, all of the
stumble over the words, you're going to hear that that's probably not intentional. Um, but we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> times so you know it's pretty good you know, it's still there it's been a while um, but just so that I can be very precise and I'll briefly demonstrate what happens if I uh, switch the tempo to half time go back to the beginning half time and we'll play and now I'll be able to work very precisely with the enunciation and articulation of notes if I can't do this I've got a problem right with the rhythm, the placement of vowels, the placement of consonants, so that I'm actually, the articulation of the text is precisely in rhythm with the, um, uh, uh, with the piano. Now, th there's another issue, though, that, I, that, that comes up with this, and I'm finding that um, the, our, the balance is right. I mean, you really need for the voice to come out a little bit more over the piano, right? Um, so now I can go here to this, um, to the editing format, and uh, maybe you can sort of see it. There's a thing to change the dynamics, okay? And um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to sh lower the dynamics about 30%, so you'll see the dramatic difference. Um, and we're going to apply that and go back at the beginning. Okay, so I have now the opportunity to find that dynamic level that, that's where it's comfortable, that I don't feel as a singer that I'm straining to get over the, the piano. Um, then here, here's one other quick example. Um, This afternoon when Dr. Nile came in and she rehearsed with him. Now, this would be simulating what he would be doing in the rehearsal studio. What we call the melismatic passages. We have a lot of notes to sing and we want to be accurate. Um, there is a way for us to say, okay, I need to practice this one segment of the piece and I want to be able to do it several times over. Um, and uh, so I'll show you briefly what what we intend with that. <laughs>
problem that oftentimes that tenors have with this piece is there's an entrance that comes in a little bit earlier sometimes than it feels like it should. So you want to be able to go back and make sure that you hit that entrance each time. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, uh, select the spot in the score where I want to begin. And uh, now I've blocked off, and perhaps you can see, I've blocked off at just a segment of the recording. And when I hit play, I'll hopefully be able to jump in. examples of how uh, this improves the practice experience for singers because you know they're going to go into in between their lessons and, and just stand at the piano and sing a cappella or they're going to sing with uh, 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 earbuds in their ears with the, something they've recorded on their phones and if they want to be able to go back and do that passage over and over again they have to kind of find their way guess where it is it's very awkward it takes a lot of time so this is just going to uh, it occurred to me as I was really thinking through this in the grand scheme of things uh, over a four-year period of time students in studying to master their instrument voice or otherwise are essentially given 112 hours of instruction time individual instruction time on that um, so everything that we can do and provide uh, in, in terms of their practice experience that enhances the effectiveness of that time and the presence of the, of the teachers influenced by how it's recorded or, or just the fact that they have that uh, tool to reverse with makes that learning experience much richer and, and much more efficient and much quicker. We can accomplish a whole lot more um, with that. Um, there are further applications beyond what I'm showing you here, obviously. Um, I just want to take a minute, because we're going to obviously run long if we're not careful. Um, and that, um, I've just spoken about the... They have the audio track that's laid down that communicates it into the Spirio language. And then they have the musicologist that matches the video frame to each and every note. And then they have to study Bill Evans' pedaling technique so they can come in and add the pedal the way he would have added the pedal. So we have recreated as closely to that artist that we can. So let me end with... Uh, When you download the app, you get access to all these. Oh, they're free. The library is endless for free. Uh, Duke Ellington, um, Second Doll, which is the only song I can play. 1970.
why do they choose certain artists? Every one of these artists were Steinway artists. They're the only ones who record that are associated with Steinway and Sons as a Steinway artist. So when I'm, I didn't even know Bill Evans when I started this. And it's one of the, it's the most single ask. Do you have any Bill Evans on there? I gotta fly out of Austin at one, so I gotta get out here at 11.